So dplyr joins um, the in base R we would use the merge function um, for the most part to merge our data. Um, and then the same merge function is used with different arguments for all different types of merges. Um, this is somewhat problematic because it's A, easy to mess up, um, and B, it's easier to read and know um, the different types of merges, um, which one you're using. If you use a different uh, syntax for, for each type of merge. So I'm showing here the general uh, structure for merges. So each type of a, a, a merge, and it, I'm going to show what those are here. Um, I'll go back to that in a second. But um, inner join, for instance, is a type of merge um, that you might be familiar with, a full join, left join, right join, et cetera. So those are going to be the names of our functions here. So in this case, I would be doing an inner join. Um, I'm, all, I'm not going to go over a lot on what an inner join is versus a, a join because that's not really in the scope. This is how to use dplyr. Um, I have information that you can learn that in my Excel sheet. So the important dplyr functions and in this PowerPoint, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, so the general structure, you would would put data frame one and data frame two. Um, this part is actually optional for the um, inner join. So you can specify uh, in any of the join variables what you want to join by. That's probably best practice. Um, but if the two variables or whatever number of variables that you want to merge by have the same variable names and you leave out this by statement, it will merge by, on, by default to all of the variables that match within each individual data set. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So, so this is what I in the past have done on the back end. So you guys have did, didn't have to deal with it. Um, so I, as, as you probably in a lot of cases when I pass along data, it would already have region merged in. It would already have rural versus metropolitan merged in. It would have all the that information already given to you. Um, but this is something that in real life you're going to have to do yourself. So this is how it would be done. If we go up here, so like for, for I said for the USDA, we have these rural codes. So we already loaded in that data. Um, so I'll look at our original data set. So this is what you would if you downloaded them yourself this is what you would see um the each of the individual rural codes is listed here for each so one through three is metropolitan and everything else is uh is considered rural or micropolitan um, micropolitan is basically in between rural and metropolitan in this case i'm just using a rural versus metro um i just know this because i used to do, use this a lot i i work a, a rural health policy research center. So I have know how to use this. So this is a great uh, uh, example of when we would use the NFL statement. So this is what I would do in real life. So we have our rural, rural codes um, and I want to have a grouped value for metro versus rural. Um, I would use that mutate function, create rural dot metro, anything that that is uh, between one and three would be considered metropolitan and anything else would be considered rural. And I don't need this rural code anymore. It's difficult to uh, conceptualize what it is, so I just got rid of it. So it won't be merged into our, our data. Um, and in that in this case, that is what it was used for. Um, I also am going to have you guys to merge in a Medicaid expansion indicator. So if we open this, I gave this to you and I did make sure these states were written in the same way as the other states. But that after a merge, you would want to check that because say if somebody put DC instead of District of Columbia in one data set and it was written District in Columbia in another, it would show up as NA. So I'm showing here which states expanded Medicaid and which did not. So 
I provided that data set for you. Um, um, I'm going to show what this looks like. See that I did not include a by, dot sta by statement here, but my state uh, variable is called state in both data sets, and the FIPS is called FIPS in both data sets. So by default, it merges by those two values, and you can see what they are down here to just check. So that, that's what that would look like. Um, and I showed the alternative if we put the by it would automatically merge by these two. These pieces of code are exactly equivalent, but I just wanted to show that. Uh, uh, so that is how we would do the merging in, in general. So this is also a great reason to use dplyr is you can chain merges. So in base R, you have to just like if else statements you have to nest merges if you want to do consecutive merges or you have to then uh, create one variable and then uh, one data set merge and then put assign it to a variable and then merge another one with the other the variable that you just used and it's just a mess and it's hard to follow so what this uh, dplyr allows you to do is to uh, merge data frame one and data frame two and then dump that, that result into in this case it was an inner join and then it dumps the result into a full join so when you're doing say this dumping uh, of one into the other and you're still still using two data sets uh, to differentiate which which one is dumped into the full join um, you would put a period for the one that comes from the previous line and then and if you were to merge another data frame three, you could do that. You can use different joins, um, types of joins, but you can dump this result into here and you can do that in one line of code with no nesting and no multiple lines of code. Um, so this is something that is in my Excel sheet here um, that I created to try to understand what joins did what. Um, these are pretty, pretty standard. There are things that you've probably seen many, many times. The ones that I, there are a couple extras. I'm going to go over the anti-join real quick because I use it a lot. So the anti-join, when you put a data frame one and data frame two, it, it will return all the values that match neither data frame. So all values that, that um, uh, when you merged would have been dropped. So, um, so it keeps non-matching rows is another way to put it. Um, and then some joins remove duplicates, some joins do not. I indicated which ones which here. Some keep all columns, some keep only columns from one. So this is just something that you're gonna wanna refer to when you're doing full joins if you're not a SQL user already, because a lot of you will know what these are. Um, if if you are a SQL user. So um, I would refer back to that. I'm not gonna go over the differences between these because I think it is a little bit out of scope. But if, are there any questions on how this is done? Okay, so so you can see it in action. Um, we have, I did already show this, so, but I don't think, I think I showed the result. So if we run our public insurance, so this is gonna, if we open this particular variable. So now we're seeing in here, um, and, and you probably wanna just delete these columns because they're duplicates of what is up front. However, if you were going to check and make sure it merged correctly, this is good to have in there temporarily. That's how I would check my merge. Um, so we have values um, showing which states did not expand Medicaid and which states did expand Medicaid. We also have rural versus metropolitan. So our merge was successful. Um, we would check for NA values to make sure. So for instance, I wanted to know if this merged correctly. I would, I'd see, okay, there's no NA values. So I didn't have any non-matching values in my merge. So that's what it would look like. And we would often use that for another, 
another purpose. So the reason in this case that I joined these two were to find, uh, to summarize the public health insurance variables we just used. So adults and children um, in rural versus uh, metro counties and also group by Medicaid, expanded Medicaid and did not expand Medicaid. So if we go into here, I will run that. Medicaid expansion rule. So you're seeing here that metropolitan um, um, counties that did not expand Medicaid are have 15% of uh, adults on public insurance and 39% uh, of children. Um, you can look at the ones that did expand Medicaid. So this is actually surprising. Um, in states that expanded Medicaid, um, there are less children on uh, on on Medicaid, which um, the, the reason for this is, is the Medicaid, uh, whether expanded Medicaid or not, a state will, will have similar um, high thresholds for children who are beyond Medicaid. So whether you expand it or not, these eligibility, um, it, it's going to look the same. So it's usually between 200% of poverty and 350% of poverty. And that's going to not differ much whether you're expanded or not. So um, keep that in mind. And that's why this it's giving this surprising value for a metro and for rural. You're seeing the same. So, but where you're having, it, when a state has expanded Medicaid versus not, adult thresholds are quite different. So we can see the metro and, and here, um, we can also see that uh, the uh, smaller percentage of metropolitan adults are on, on Medicaid than in urban area or in rural areas. Um, the reason for this is that uh, in, in a lot of cases, the poverty is higher here in rural areas than urban areas, um, and there are just less wealth. So this shouldn't be surprising, but you can see when states that did not expand Medicaid, 17% were on Medicaid of adults and 21% did not expand Medicaid. So there were a couple of NA values for rural versus urban. I showed you those earlier. Um, and those were the FIPS codes that were um, different across years. I kept that in just so you could see that and be aware that that is usually an issue. So I would know that I would then have to go back and fix these FIPS codes if I saw this result. So are there any, any questions about that? Okay. So the last thing I want to show you, and then I, I'll stay on for for a, a, as long as needed, just so I can, if you have any questions about, about any of this or just personal questions that you'd want to ask, feel free to stay on and ask them. Another really useful thing. So say if you have in a data set, you know you have duplicates. So in a lot of cases in base R, you would use the unique function and then wrap that around a data frame. So oh, when we're seeing, uh, there is also, say you did five D plier uh, commands that are chained together. And then at the end, you wanted to remove the duplicates. You can, can use this distinct, and then we have this period again. Um, for this individual one, it will dump this value into the distinct. Um, it's just a little bit different syntax. Uh, um, so I showed you how this works. So I created a small data frame, just it, it has, but I wanted to show what it would look like. Um, I created the first row and the last row <coughs> to be exactly the same. So when we see this, this is what that small piece of code created. Um, and then and I use this data set and you use the distinct function uh, and removed any duplicates. So then it would get rid of this duplicate row and it leaves with no duplicates. 